so hello students now as i promised in my last video that i will talk about the lpg reform but before discussing about this topic if this question comes in gs paper 2 or in gs paper 1 what approach you will adopt to write your answer and how it will be different from if the question is asked in gs paper 3 obviously the tilt of answer will be more towards the gs paper 3 but if it is asked in gs paper 2 then you will have to relate it with the politics politics don't understand that i am talking about the murky politics and all i am talking about the concept of political economy that it is being said that politics is embedded in the economics or whenever you are taking the political decisions, economy is the central focus. And whenever you are taking the economic decision, you always think of politics that how this particular economic step which you have taken is going to drive your politics because it is deciding factor for you to be in the power. So now, just understand that if I talk about 1991 and if I talk about before 1991 and then if we will analyze that why the BOP crisis has happened in 1991 for that I will say that politics is responsible because after independence if you will see then our leaders especially Nehru was influenced by the ideology of Fabian Socialism and the ideology of Fabian Socialism talks about protectionism, talks about protectionism. It also talks about that yes we should focus upon industrialization but that industrialization should be under the shadow of the government that is it should progress or it should develop but under the government control then also it talks about that always there should be an state interference in the micromanagement of industrial decisions state interference in micromanagement or micro factors you can say so this was the politics because of which we have adopted certain elements that has resulted into the BOP crisis. If you will see 1991 or after 1991 or if you will see 2001 that is when Mr. West Vajpayee was in power he has said that the government does not have any business in business. Why he has so? Why he has said so? It reflects the political ideology of the party to which he belonged. If you will see today's ruling government, you will find that how this government is making a balance between the protectionism and linking the Indian economic system to the global supply chain at the same time. So basically they are maintaining the balance. Don't understand like this that India at this juncture of the time is following the protectionist policy. No, it is not like this. They are maintaining the balance so that they can reap the maximum benefits of the global supply chain. So politics decides that where the economy will go and how they are looking into the driving factors for the economy. So these are the politics behind the economics. Now we will understand that because of this Fabian socialism, what has happened? So the consequence is license Raj. So license Raj simply you can understand from a very famous act that is MRTP Act, Monopolistic Restrictive Trade Practices Act. And this particular act was controlling the quantitative and qualitative factors for setting any particular industry. 
then policy of import substitution the focus was on self reliance and the focus was on self reliance and we will have to reduce the import dependency reduce the import dependency and the third one was closed economy if you will see then rupee convertibility was absent at that time rupee convertibility was absent then you will see then import tariffs were imposed then you will see that there was a very stringent act for controlling the foreign exchange that is FERA FERA act i always advise to the students that whenever you are doing or whenever you are preparing any particular topic you should remember the points like this because you will have to remember an n number of facts how it is possible for any human being to remember all the things so basically you can go for this approach that what is the broad idea and then you can remember it so now if you will see that when we have encounters to the 1991 bop crisis then what were the steps taken so the very first was liberalization this liberalization you can see in the industrial sector and in the financial market so in industrial sectors what has happened that the system of license was abolished except some of the industries like hazardous industries alcohol breezes and etc and also the prices of the commodity was driven by market now if you will see financial market then the role of rbi was now only of facilitator and therefore you can see the entry of private banks after 1991 along with this if you will see then the corporate tax has reduced now the second step was privatization under the head of privatization focus was on de reserving the industries or focus was on reducing the de reserved list what do you mean by this there were certain industries which were reserved for the public sector it means that private sector cannot come in the reserved category of the industrial sector now it has been removed and today only rail defense atomic energy these are the three things which has been reserved for the public sector otherwise private sector can come in another different sector how it is globalization now if you will see globalization then what has happened in the terms of trade policy i will say the very first thing that has happened is quantitative restrictions on the import have been reduced or removed then import license for the import has been removed then if you will see in the terms of foreign exchange market then the stringent fera has been replaced by fema act so these are the things which has you can say it is a response to the 1991 bop crisis now we will see that what were the benefits of the steps taken by the government size of economy has moved from 6 lakhs crore to approximately 140 lakh crore then foreign investment today it has reached to 100 billion forex reserve today it has reached to more than 670 billion us dollar growing trade if you will see then india has started exporting many items for example pharma is the most important item then we are also we are also ex exporting petro products then capital and financial market because of the coming of regulator like sebi there has been an enormous growth in the rise of capital and financial market then rise of middle class obviously whenever the demand is increasing then consumption because of the because of the increase in consumption 
the demand is increasing day by day because of the rise of millennials or because of the rise of middle class so actually what was happening before 1991 there was no any demand for the new products because the people were not aware and if the people are aware also then there is no any provision for the supply of those goods and services to them but now because of the rising consumption there has been a rise of middle class also or you can say that there is a causative effect or there is a causative effect in both these because of the rise of consumption there is a rise of middle class and because of the rise of middle class there is a rise in consumption so now if you will see noticeable change even after that if i ask or if i say that lpg reforms even after 30 years is a work in progress then what point you will write the very first point you can see that there is small size of financial sector in the last slide i was talking about that there is a enormous growth in the capital and the financial market but if you will see the size of economy and then if you will compare your financial market then it is in nascent stage okay now financial sector will develop obviously it is going to develop but for that financial inclusion should happen financial literacy is important and also you will have to focus upon that how you can make a ease how you can make the life of an investor ease so that he will invest in the financial market the lack of emphasis on human resource development undoubtedly if you are taking a lot of steps for the economic uh, or for the augmentation of the economic factors and if you are not focusing on a skill building all your efforts will go in vain then limited inclusivity and jobless growth obviously every time we say that with the rate of increase of the gdp the rate of employment is not increasing and therefore it is a jobless growth then complicated taxes and framework even after taking a lot many steps after bop crisis there is a low tax to gdp ratio low tax to gdp ratio then there is a rise in sales and surcharge then there is no any rationalization of agricultural tax these are the things where we need to focus upon then several areas have remained untouched for example we have excessively focused upon the trade the foreign trade and the capital market but on agriculture and informal informal sector forest management we have not focused upon then the last is policy flip flop there is a inconsistency in the policy especially industrial policy so once you are coming up with a policy you will have to focus upon how you will strategize and how you will use your infrastructure how will you use your land how you are going to manage employment how you are going to make investor friendly environment each and everything is an integrated part of the economic augmentation and therefore policy flip flop is should not be focused or you can say policy flip flop should be avoided and the best example you can see in the terms of acz what we have done now the last thing what has not been done yet or what you we should do basically you can say what is required to do so now the fo focus should be on diversified privatization yes you are doing privatization it's good but at the same time your aim should be that there should not be a concentration of wealth and also it is a violation of dpsp principles then shareholder capitalism to stakeholder capitalism the concept is that the capitalist should focus upon the welfare of employees the welfare of customer the welfare of shareholders the welfare of local communities also integrated and progressive taxes and system because of the rise of cryptocurrency this is an unconventional you can say this is a kind of unconventional um, currencies because of the digital economy that is the cryptocurrency you can talk about non fungible assets these are rising nowadays and therefore we will have to focus upon the taxation system that can integrate the rising digital coins and the consequences of the digital economy
then the public sector will have to play a great role today because we will have to be clear we will have to be very clear that if the public sector is not performing well then obviously government is going to disinvestment government is going for privatization and therefore their roles should be first aligned with the policy if they fail to align their effectiveness if they fail to achieve the goal that has been set in the industrial policy then government can go for the privatization also but first define their role then we will have to focus upon integrated approach for the financial market that is financial inclusion financial literacy and these are the things where we need to focus upon so that financial market can or can develop in proportion to the economic growth so these are the things where we can focus upon and these are the things which will help you in analyzing the question coming on lpg reform because it has not been asked in 2022 therefore just a kind of discussion or just you can go through the important points important example which i have uh, which i have talked about that can help you in your answer writing so that's all about the lpg reform next time i will come with another topic that is tribals in india we will look into from the constitutional legal perspective their issues and the policies and what are the different intervention of the government and what has been achieved what is to be done so the next video will be on the tribal and their rights that's all thanks to all of you